today I'm going to talk you through a project that I've been working on which is involving downloading data from the National Biodiversity Network Atlas as a CSV format which you can open up in Excel running some macros that will enable that to be reformatted uh, into a more sensible format for uploading to this very useful site at earthpoint.us that can convert an Excel spreadsheet to a KML or Keyhole Markup Language file which is the format used by Google Earth to create layouts like this. So the eventual thing you can build will be a file which contains a series of subfiles depending on the uh, classification of the species concerned. So I have some grasses in this one at the moment. And I just randomly picked these ones out really just as an experiment. You'll notice that these markers are different colours. That was really just me experimenting with uh, changing one of the fields in my spreadsheet uh, to give different kind of a colour range. And I just made it look colourful. But I intend to ally some of this data with other kinds of data uh, to affect the symbology so it'll be more meaningful. For instance, I could have you know, a pH scale of preferred kind of acidity, alkalinity on a site and then potentially uh, by species I might get some sort of rough indication of changes in soil chemistry across a site or something like that or perhaps I would want to use a, a larger icon for a, a less accurate data form or, or something. So there's a few things that it can play with but I just wanted to get this out there so people could use it in the meantime. So I use the NBN Gateway Atlas and I go to Locations, Explore by Address Postcode or Location. I might have to pause this at, pause this at some point because it can be quite slow to load. Um, it's defaulting to my, uh, my current address, I think, because it, uh, this is where I searched last. Um, I would change this to a 10k radius because our current exercise range uh, under lockdown is up to 5k. Sorry, is up to is up to um, five miles. So that's roughly because this is in kilometres that would be 10k or what have you. So it takes a little while to load. I'll pause this. Here we go. So we have the data. Um, anyone can sign up for an account, and when you've got an account, it will download data to your. Um, to your email so I'll show you how you do that. Uh, I go with occurrence records, um, give it a sensible name, download it as a spreadsheet fine, as a comma separated variable file is again fine. Um, industry application all this I go for public because I'm not doing this in a professional capacity. Uh, accept licensing, press next. It will then download a file um, link to your email and you can just copy and paste that uh, into your browser and then it will uh, give you this zip file in the corner which you can uh, decompress using 7-zip that's what I use um, and then you know open it up from there as a, as a spreadsheet so I created this spreadsheet it's called MBN Gateway Species Records Reformatter if you don't have the developer tab um, visible you'll need to change that so that you can access some macros it's the easiest way I have two macros in here one called record reformat and one called create filtered data um, they're labeled A and B in the order of which that you use them so I will just show you uh, you will go first of all to the data um, so for instance I've got this local records data and what I do is I copy this tab move go to so right click uh, then select the MBN gateway reformatter uh, create copy so you've still got the original data if you need it um, I'm not going to bother doing that because I already have it inside my reformatter just to show you the uh, show you the idea so this is a huge data set there's like over 79,000 different records in here uh, not all of it's particularly interesting um, and also some of the um, 
data in here is, is also not very interesting. So uh, I run this macro, uh, the first macro, and it gives you this subset of stuff. Useful stuff, latitude and longitude, the name, a description which is going to show in your KML file. Coordinate accuracy, which is uh, really useful because some of them are highly irrelevant. You know, 2,000 meters accuracy or something is absolutely no use to anybody. And uh, yeah, so the idea is you go to macros, run this. Uh, it will then output a file that looks like this. It takes a little time because this is a huge data set. Just going to uh, clear the uh, clear the filter here and talk you through how I go about filtering these. First thing I do is um, yeah, so you want to put a filter on here. I look at the coordinate accuracy, and I'm really not interested in any of these 500 meters and upwards uh, accuracy. Totally useless. Um, so. There we go, that subsetted it a little bit. And say you're interested in, a, I'm studying grasses at the moment, so I'll go in and search for POACA, there we go. There we go. So, and in this info column, I have a load of dates, and maybe I'm not interested in anything before 2000. There we go. So I can now run the second macro, which will take a little less time because there's actually only 25 records in here. That's, uh, that's an improvement over 79,000 anyway. So developer macros, create filtered data and run. Okay, so you may have noticed I did have a runtime error there. I've sorted that out now. Uh, it's just because it was such a big data set, uh, changed something that was an integer variable to a long variable, will work fine now. So, macros. Going for the second one now that I've filtered my data. Run it and type in a name, filtered, or just whatever you want to call it really. And here we go. So now we have this, this sheet which you can uh, right click on the tab, um, move or copy, move to another workbook, uh, go with that. So this is now a spreadsheet which you can upload to this site, uh, but I'll, first of all I'll show you that there are some properties here. Hide name until mouse over means that when you're in Google Earth it doesn't show a, a name until you actually scroll over it, which is great if you've got lots of icons. Now, icon 111 is one of a variety of different icons. I've actually created a, a little reference chart in, in this spreadsheet just to show what they all look like. Um, so these are the different icons. You can basically fill that out with whichever of these you want, or you could potentially use a, some kind of a lookup to base it on a criterion. Uh, I mean, the species names are in there. If you want to link this to other data sheets, you can do it. Uh, you can really vary that however you want to. But I'm keeping things so simple so far. So icon scale, you might want to vary that with the level of, uh, of accuracy of this data. Um, so these are all like 100 meters coordinates or what have you. Uh, icon heading shows what direction the icon is facing. So uh, some headings are radially symmetrical. They're not very useful for that. But if you pick one that isn't, then that can be quite handy. You can use that to uh, demonstrate something or other. Um, this was generated from these order family and genus things. And this is what the upload will then use to create your file. So, so I don't have long now, but I'm just going to show you uh, on the Excel to KML file. You go to choose file, you select your file, um, and then you go to view on Google Earth, and it will open up a Google Earth thing. So you can do it that way. So I hope that's been useful. I will include links to websites and to downloads for the spreadsheet resource. Thank you for your time.